yeah, yeah. Great intro. Thank you so much. Welcome to FAQ 155. Let's make this a positive FAQ. Just like every other week. Okay, let's just go. Casper De. Hey Ola, what gear would you recommend to new guitarists if they want to play metal like you, but on a beginner budget? Had a friend ask me this, and I had a hard time thinking of other things than the katana. That's a great question. I think we have to start off with uh, what one would consider being a budget amplifier. Sometimes some people claim that like a tube amplifier uh, on a thousand dollar is a good budget, but it depends. I'm, I'm, I'm probably saying that you're, you want to lowball it like <laughs> really hard. So the Katana, yes, it is a good starting amplifier in my opinion, but also uh, I would put in the PV Viper combo in there as well, which I think has been, it's the same technology for the past seven or eight years and it's still really really good and very very inexpensive and you get all the effects, you can get the metals, the chugs, everything in there man, so I wouldn't uh, you know, the Katana is great, but also consider the PV Viper. Now, if you want to have a tube amplifier, okay, now we're getting to another budget, I would probably get uh, Marshall DSL, one of the new ones that they have. I think it's an excellent amplifier for the price right there. But then you also have to have a cabinet and all that, and you know, it, it's, you're starting to kind of rack up some costs right there. But uh, there you go, hope that helped, thank you. Asi Valle. Hey Ola, who is an artist you've always wanted to meet and what would you want to talk to them about? That's a great question. You know, even though I've had him on my show, Coffee with Ola, I would love to meet John Petrucci and just, you know, hang out for a second and you know, maybe just talk a little bit. Uh, he seems like such a genuine, awesome dude. And uh, even though, you know, I got a chance to, you know, fan out on the Coffee with Ola, it would be nice to just, you know, Maybe have a dinner together? Have a date? Can I have a date with Joppa Chushi? And just, you know, sit and talk for a little bit. That would be cool. What would we talk about? Beard? Would we talk about beard? I don't know. No, 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 no. Maybe, uh, maybe the, his amplifier. It's a great amplifier. I love his amplifier. Uh, no, but maybe... Uh, I don't know. Maybe I just want to fan out a little bit more. It'd just be completely awkward, just like in my Coffee with John Petrucci video. So, I don't know, but John Petrucci is definitely on my list. Obviously, I can't pick Dimebag because uh, uh, he's not with us anymore, but yeah, John Petrucci, man. Wouldn't that be cool? Legendary K4, are you still glad you made the decision to work in an office rather than doing it within your home? Yes, this has been the best decision I've ever made uh, in terms of my YouTube life. I would say. It has created an incredible disconnect between home and work, which is what I needed because uh, I was not doing too well back when I was working from home. Uh, it was way too close from the dining table to go and work in the office. And uh, you know, if I didn't have anything to do, I would eat dinner with the family and then I would just go into my office and continue working. It's not okay. You know, I couldn't handle being able to disconnect when I had to work so close at home with family life. But now, when I have it here, you know, at home I have like one guitar hanging on the wall. That's it. Uh, I have all my gaming stuff at home and then I have all the working stuff here. So when I go to the office, it's work and it's work only. And that is... It's just great. I feel like I'm more productive this way than before because when you have that stuff at home, it's like, you know, you're sitting and working, but it's also very easy to just like, oh, you know, let's play a little bit of game or, you know, go and check what's in the fridge or whatever. But it really helped me with uh, the pro productivity of my YouTube channel and everything else I do as well, just working in general and solar guitars and uh, my music and whatnot. So it's been the best decision I've ever uh, taken, taken, taken. Token. Uh, and I, I should have done it sooner, probably. So there you go, thank you. Luca Corradini. Hi Ola, I have some music recorded but never released them because I'm feeling that is more of the same. I write some music in the 80s hard rock and something in the Pantera vibe. Did you think that I should release my songs anyway or just keep this shit for me because no one's gonna listen? Thanks for everything, your contents are inspirational. Cheers from Brazil. Thank you so much, Brazil. I think the problem is that you're sitting worrying about what people might think about your music. I mean, try to get, you know, try to kind of shove that feeling away and just release the music already and see what happens. There's probably gonna be people enjoying the music. I understand the self-doubt, I have it as well, but you just have to let go, man. You just have to let 
the stuff out there. Otherwise, it feels like you're never gonna progress because you're always gonna have the stuff that you're like, oh, you know, but people might like, not like it. I mean, if it's good, people will find it and people will listen to it. So that's my tip to you. You know, don't have fear. Just fucking, just fucking do it, man. Okay? Thank you. Derelict Moon. Chaba, Ola, du er tungst. Me and my wife always enjoy Sundays with Ola and Louise. Can you elaborate any on the Star Singer concept, musically or otherwise? Songs interconnected, tuning, songwriting, events in your life, giving birth to a song idea, etc. Big friend from Göteborg. Awesome, thank you. I know a lot of people probably want to hear the mystery about how one creates an album. I mean... But the truth is, with me, there isn't really that much of a mystery. When I write a song, I hear immediately where on an album this song will be. And that's kind of how my brain thinks. I just don't write a song to be a song. I write a song to fit on an album, uh, to give an emotion. And with that song, there has to be another song after that or before that to kind of, you know, create a stronger emotion throughout the whole journey. In that sense, so I'm very fond of creating a journey uh, throughout a whole album where, you know, one song makes another song and that song makes another song. So for instance, I can feel like if I have one song that has some sort of feeling, I feel like I might want to write something that is completely different afterwards. So in that sense, it's really fun, man. I can come up with a song and be like, you know, I know exactly how the follow-up song will sound like, and then I try to write that. It's, it's a really trippy kind of uh, songwriting uh, task, uh, but it's also a lot of fun. And uh, that's what I like about the album format, that it's, you know, it's, it's your voice being expressed through music, basically. Now, is people gonna like it? Well, that's going back to the other question. Who knows, man? Just, you just have to believe in your own stuff and maybe someone will like it. And uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it, it does not. That's just how it is. Star Singer, the name, uh, obviously goes back to one of my favorite uh, TV shows when I was a kid. Star Singer, which is an anime. It was a pretty big anime for Sweden. There was also, there was a couple of really big animes when I was a kid. Star Singer is one. Then there was uh, Rai, the uh, cave boy or whatever it was called in English. Uh, There's also Sandy Bell, which was aimed for the girls. And then uh, Cobra. What else? Uh, what else? Cobra was really brilliant. I love Cobra. But also Macross the movie was a big thing for me. So I'm just trying to pay tribute to, you know, my memories and you know master of the universe first album obviously uh, a kind of a jab to he-man which you know was one of my favorite toys when i was a kid star singer one of my favorite shows when i was a kid so next album we'll just have to see you know thank you so much for that question admiral bongo hola do you think dealing with labels is worth it nowadays like for booking tours promotion recording sponsorship and whatnot it depends it depends i've talked about this before it depends on how much you want to do yourself right now what you're writing are booking tours, promotion, recording sponsorships and whatnot, and publishing and distribution and all that. All those are separate things that you can decide to do yourself or let a label handle. Now, personally, for my stuff, I wouldn't join a label because I think I probably have more power uh, or more of my own power because I would do more for my music than a label would do for me. It's like having, you know, it's like being a boss and expecting that your employees are gonna work as hard as you with your uh, company, they're never gonna be as motivated as you to run your business. And same thing goes with music. You want to succeed the most. Labels, they also want you to succeed, but they won't go the extra length to make it succeed. They will go uh, within their reach. So in my opinion, I think that you alone can probably do a lot more damage in terms of, uh, oh, damage might be the wrong word, but you know, uh, do better than labels uh, because you want it more. I know a lot of bands that are, uh, you know, doing all the booking themselves and uh, uh, sponsorships and all that. But at the end of the day, all of these, like booking tours, promotion, recording, sponsorship, all of those elements are available for you to hire online. I mean, there, there are booking agencies out there. There's uh, distribution deals out there. You can call them and let them handle what you don't want to handle. So in that sense, you can just decide what you don't want to do and let someone else do it. So you don't really need a label for that. You can just get a distribution deal or whatever. So no, I don't think it's worth it getting a label. Uh, no. 
but it also depends on the size of the band. So f me, man. No, Jeff Winter. Hola, when can we expect a new Feared album? I'm hoping and hoping and hoping. Feared is so beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. It is actually happening. I'm just not gonna say anything more at this point, but it is happening. Don't worry. It's coming. Joe Barco. Hey, hola. Do you have any updates on your Warhammer hobby with your son? Let's see those painted minis. Okay, let's switch. <laughs> all right, so now I'm home in my kitchen and I basically put all of my Warhammer stuff on display. So here it is. So this is what I have so far. And uh, I'm also mixed with a little bit of my kids. Uh, different creations. I mean, look at this. <laughs> Looks great, but um, yeah, I actually haven't been able to paint that much because ever since uh, Brexit, actually, oh, let me fix the lens. Ever since Brexit, there uh, was a slight delay on colors from uh, Games Workshop. I actually didn't have any blacks uh, left, but uh, now I have black, so I can start again. But uh, I, I haven't really been painting in a while. But you can, you know, check this out. I started out with these, the um, the Space Wolves, and uh, yeah, man, it's a lot of fun. Uh, look at this poor man's face. I mean, I really have a problem with the eyes. Uh, it's really tough to to get completely right, but uh, yeah, you know, I'm 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 slowly getting back into it. It's not easy. Eyes on this one is pretty good. Uh, so I have like the Space Wolves here. These are Eldar. I don't know what they're called in uh, like an Eldar kill team, basically. And I always, I see, yeah, I've done a little bit of dirt on the basis on this one. Just, uh, you know, experimenting a little bit with the dirt. And then, uh, you know, it's fun and all to paint these and, the, you know, space uh, wolves. But then I also have a death squad, which I think is, uh, uh, it's just, it's just cooler to paint black figurines, man. And uh, this is probably the last one I did before I uh, before I uh, had a break. And uh, trying a little bit of the a little bit of a, like a cooler blade there. Pretty happy about this one. And uh, yeah, I'm just you know you know it's a little nice extra off-screen hobby. Uh, you know, I don't really have any specific plans. Me and my son played a little bit of Kill Team. But uh, yeah, we haven't played in a while now. We played maybe five or, five or six rounds. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit of fun, but for me, the painting process is, is what, what's fun about it. And you know, that's the, uh, what I have as a, I don't know, a small little artistic, you know, freak out or whatever I would call it. But yeah, it's fun. Also, first time I've, I've done, uh, you know, environmental things like this, which turned out pretty cool. And yeah, it's a lot of fun, but uh, yeah, still have to get back into it a little bit. I've been on a break because of the colors, but yeah, there you go. Henry Hadley, hey Ola, can't wait for your new album. Can't wait to get my hands on a Picton. So I want to know if you could only keep one amp head and ca cab combo, what would it be? Keep it brutal, buddy. Hmm. <laughs> That's a great question. Right now, my favorite amplifier head is the John Petrucci uh, 2C amplifier from Mesa Boogie, but I think I have to go with a rectifier and a rectifier cabinet or an uh, oversized cabinet because you can do so much with a rectifier and uh, it's just it's just one of those samples. I know this is a boring answer and you guys gonna be like, oh, we knew we knew you would pick the rectifier <laughs> But uh, it, it, it's, it's the truth, man. It's, it was my first tube amplifier. I bought and sold so many throughout the years and I just always come back to a rectifier. There's just something nostalgic about it. And uh, I think that, was, that, that has to be my choice, man. I just love the rectifier too much. Thank you so much. Etienne Vela. Hey, all a long time viewer. Do you think that anyone can play anything on the guitar if they practice enough, no matter how technical demanding the musical piece is? Or do you think that different people are inherently limited at different levels when it comes to guitar playing? We'd love to hear your take on this. Cheers and greetings from the tiny island of Malta. This is an excellent question. And yes, I definitely think that some people have a knack for guitar playing. And even though you can practice a lot, to get to where you want. I think that some people have more of a talent for getting further than the average bloke, I would say. It's like this, you know, you can compare it to uh, drummers. Some drummers, they can twitch really fast. 
and some people can naturally twitch faster than others. You can practice this, obviously, but there's going to be some that have a more of a knack for blasting than, uh, than others. Much like sports and, you know, sprints or whatever, some are just made to run, like Usain Bolt, for instance. I mean, holy shit, I mean, he's so much better than everyone else. And I think he's just, he, he just had it predetermined that he was really good at running. I definitely believe that you are dealt different cards in life and uh, that some people have more of a knack and a talent for certain things and others might not. But then you can practice yourself to a certain level, but some people are just, you know, they can take it further in that sense. Very interesting question, thank you. Jerry B, question? Other than your own brand, what is your favorite brands to play? Thank you, love your channel, by the way. Excellent question. Let me check the rack. Those are basically all solo guitars on there. <laughs> I mean, I like a lot of guitars. I like my Fenders. I like the Washburns that I had, the Dimebags. I like them for different reasons. And I know it might sound salesy, but you know, whenever I just want to pick up a guitar, I pick up a Solar because there's always a Solar here in some tuning that I, you know, want to use. I just pick up a Solar. So uh, it's it's more common that I just pick up a Solar because I have met more of them, obviously. But uh, I will probably go. I'm really liking how Fender are doing it right now with Charvel and, you know, my Fender custom shop and whatnot. And I, I, I think Fender might maybe. Fender maybe, man. Ibanez maybe? Uh, I don't know. Shit. Thank you. Steven Mills, how can I buy the new album on CD? That is just great. Thank you. I can plug myself. I love that. Thank you for uh, enabling. Uh, yes, you can go to olaenglandshop.com. When this FAQ is aired, I think the album might actually uh, be close to release. And some have probably already gotten the album. How about that? So, uh, yes. And guys, thank you so much for the support, by the way. And uh, I'm, right, as of right now, I'm signing everything, all the albums and uh, all of that before we ship out. So if you want a signed album, just go to olaenglandshop.com and uh, you can purchase one. How about that? And that, my friends, was the last question. So thank you so much. If you have a question that you want me to answer, post them in the comment section and I'll check them through for the next video. How about that? Thank you so much for watching. Bye.